Welcome to Red Hawk Launch. My name is Nick Cubita. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm the director of orientation. I have the honor of serving you in that capacity. And I'm, I'm so excited for our incoming class. It's a big, bold, diverse class. And we're excited for all that you're bringing to our campus. Um, and so before we really dive into our program, um, I want to start us off with a land acknowledgement. And so um, I know there's quite a bit of language on here, so I'll read through this together for us on this slide. You can also scan the QR code, which will bring you to our Indigenous Peoples Institute website. And so um, as we convene together today, I want to share a land acknowledgement. And if you're not familiar with this practice, the following statement is offered as a way for our community to recognize the land on which Seattle University sits and recognize our history to honor the people past and present who belong to this place, to create common and consistent language for our events and ceremonies, and to have language that was crafted with care and wisdom. And you'll notice the source at the bottom. This is from our Native American Law Student Association on campus here. As we begin our gathering, we respectfully acknowledge that our campus sits on the homelands of the Coast Salish peoples, who continue to steward these lands and waters as they have since time immemorial. We recognize tribal nations and organizations who actively create, shape, and contribute to our thriving community at Seattle University and beyond. We as an academic community should be and are committed to doing our part to engage with and amplify the voices of native peoples and tribes. And we acknowledge our collective responsibility to advance proper education of native peoples and tribes and call for further learning and action to support the native people of this land. And so I share again, this is from the Native American Law Student Association, a group on our campus who helped craft this for our community. And the QR code there, if you do scan, will bring you to our, the website for our Indigenous Peoples Institute to give you more information about the work we're doing on campus in relation to this land acknowledgement. So with that, I'm gonna stop my screen real quick. Um, and um, we have some welcomes from some of our leaders here to join us today. And so um, before we dive into some of our connection activities and further information, I wanna introduce to you um, our president, Eduardo Peniel there, and I'll do a quick introduction President Peniel Vera is the 22nd president of Seattle University. Um, he's originally from Puyallup, Washington, um, and has remained an unwavering Mariners fan. You can ask his dog, Griffey, all about that. When he's not on campus, he enjoys taking in the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest, either from the sky as a pilot, which is a fun fact, or on hikes and camping with his family. And so with that, President Peniel Vera, I will pass the program to you. Thank you, Nick. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, wonderful to see all the enthusiastic comments. Uh, sorry about the lack of sandwiches. Someone asked about sandwiches. Uh, you know, in joining Seattle University, you're really you're starting an amazing adventure that will change how you understand yourselves and how you understand the world. And I couldn't be happier that we're going to be sharing that journey together. And you know, it's interesting as we start out to reflect on the fact that we're doing this online. We previously had these sort of events in person in Seattle and, uh, you know, COVID disrupted all of your high school experiences during COVID. When we held events like this online, it was for public health reasons. And I think what's interesting and important about this event tonight is that we're doing this online, um, not because we have to do it, but because we can do it. And our ability to host this event online allows us to extend our welcome to you over the full summer uh, preceding your arrival without forcing you to make a, a trip to Seattle if you're not from this area. And, and so in that sense, I think this event is a great example of how what we all went through during COVID has left us with tremendous new tools and skills that allow us to engage our students uh, where, where you are and when you are. And um, using online events like this one as a supplement to uh, the intensive in-person experiences that really characterize the Jesuit approach to education means that the Seattle University experience after COVID will not be the same as the experience uh, during COVID, pre-COVID. It, it'll be better. Uh, and as you begin your time at Seattle University, I'm just excited for the experience that you'll have here. I, I remember my own 
time as an undergraduate uh, centuries ago as a, as a period of intellectual growth and personal growth that is really, it's without parallel uh, in my life before or since. And, and um, I'll also say when I was in your shoes, kind of heading off to college, I you know remember feeling no small measure of anxiety and insecurity. And I'm sure that many of you have those same feelings as you join a new community and enter uh, a new stage in your lives. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, I remember feeling occasionally lonely. I, you know, I was in a new place. I missed my family. I missed friends I'd left behind to, to come to school. I sometimes doubted uh, whether I belonged or, or whether I would make new friends, whether I was good enough. And, and I thought, oh, maybe the school made some kind of mistake. And um, one of the messages I want to give to you as you begin your journey at Seattle University is to say in no uncertain terms that uh, you do belong here. Um, you're, you're good enough. You will succeed. We will do everything uh, along the way to help you succeed. You will make some great new friends, friends who will change your lives and friends who will you will keep for, for your entire lifetime. And, and, you know, I'm confident about this because of the kind of community Seattle University is. Um, you know, and to state the obvious, to, uh, for starters, we are a university and there's just no better place um, than a university to grow, to, to take intellectual risks, to explore new ideas. And it bears reinforcing that at a time when so many people, uh, for largely political reasons, like to question the value of university education. But there's no place like a university for that kind of intellectual development. Um, but Seattle University is more than just a university, I, you know, I would I would argue there's nowhere better than Seattle University for the kind of intellectual exploration and growth that I'm talking about. And I'll give you three reasons for that. So universities generally are ideal places for intellectual exploration and growth because of our diversity. There are just no communities um, in our society as diverse as universities, no matter where you come from. And collectively, and just looking in the chat, you come from all around the world. I saw University with as many different kinds of people from different backgrounds, different life experiences and identities, all living and learning together. And, and that will stretch you for sure. Uh, by bringing people together from such a broad cross section of experiences and perspectives, universities become these kind of cauldrons of intellectual cross fertilization and experimentation. And, and sustaining that kind of intellectual ferment requires more than just compositional diversity. It requires a supportive and inclusive culture that that fosters a sense of belonging and and that sense of belonging in turn creates the conditions for the expression of our collective diversity inside and outside the classroom and i think seattle university stands out among universities for our efforts to create that kind of environment one that allows members of our diverse community to reach their fullest potential to express themselves and and this is the first reason for my confidence we at seattle university understand our commitment uh, to diversity, to an inclusive culture, to be at the very heart of our academic excellence. And we recognize uh, that we're not perfect. We recognize that um, this is a, a never ending process creating this kind of environment. And we always <coughs> are looking to improve and reflect on how we're doing. <coughs> Sorry. Individually and, and collectively, we have room to grow, but we're committed to doing that work. And we're justifiably proud of the community that, that we've created. The second reason for my confidence is that Seattle University stands apart from other universities uh, because of our Jesuit heritage. And uh, Jesuit education is known around the world for being uh, student-centered, for its commitment to educating and caring for the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. And I saw again in the chat when, when uh, Nick was asking your reasons for coming here, many people pointed to our small class sizes and our the sense of community that uh, is really characteristic of Jesuit education. You know, and so from your point of view, our commitment to focusing on our students means that unlike other universities, um, we don't treat your intellectual development as a distraction from the things we'd rather be doing, you know, our research or our publishing. We do all those things, but we include you in them. And, and, and undergraduate education is really at the center of how we understand ourselves. You are the reason we're here. Um, you know, as I as I told our graduating students just this uh, this past Monday um, at, at our commencement, you are our mission. You are the impact that we have on the world. And, and over 500 years of Jesuit education has honed this approach to education that engages your whole person, your intellect, your spirit, 
teach you not just what you need to know, but how to discover, how to create knowledge, and ultimately how to live and how to live with integrity. Uh, and I and I think the best evidence of that is our mission statement, uh, which dedicates us to educating the whole person to professional formation and to empowering leaders for a just and humane world. And those words are literally carved on a wall outside my office, and I, I see them and take them in every day as I, I come to work, and they remind me of why I'm here and why all of us are here. And I just want you to think about those the last few words of that mission statement, empowering leaders for a just and humane world. And I ask you to kind of reflect on that because that short phrase contains so many powerful hopes for you and for the world. You know, for you, our hope is that we can help you become leaders, become the leaders of the future. Our hope is that the education you receive at Seattle University will empower you, uh, that the experiences uh, that you have at Seattle University inside and outside the classroom will give you tools to become even more effective in your leadership. And, and our hope for the world is that after you graduate, you'll take those tools and, and deploy them in the service of others and in the process, help them uh, to bring a just and humane world into being. And, and there's just never been a greater need for uh, engineers who understand ethics or humanists who understand data science. And our hope is that you will become those kinds of leaders in your workplaces, in your families, and in your communities. And then my last reason, I said three. So one was just our, our commitment to inclusion and our, and our diversity. The second was our Jesuit heritage. And then finally, our third reason, even among our Jesuit sister universities, Seattle University stands apart. And I, I could name any number of ways that we're different, but I'll just focus on one, and that's our location at the very heart of the most dynamic metropolitan region in the country. And I, again, I saw in the, in the chat how many of you, when you were talking about the reasons for coming to Seattle University, talked about Seattle and the desire to be in Seattle. And, and, and that's a real thing. Seattle is the fast, last year again, was the fastest growing metropolitan region in the United States. And, and because of our location here in the heart of Seattle, we're able to bring Seattle into your classroom and take your classroom out into the city. So, you know, you'll find among our faculty and the people who come to speak on our campus, the most prominent leaders of Seattle's business, civic, and nonprofit sectors. And they, they teach here and they speak here because we are Seattle's university and, and you will love learning from them. And then on the flip side, in your time here, you'll have amazing opportunities to go out into the city to learn and to serve, whether in our Center for Community Engagement, uh, our youth initiative, uh, internship and externship opportunities at some of the most innovative companies in the world, or just exploring uh, the rich and diverse community that is Seattle with all of its strengths. And also, you know, it's a city, all of its challenges. And, and th those opportunities will become part of your classroom. And of course, being in Seattle means that you get to experience all of this while surrounded by the most spectacular natural beauty in the world. And I, I got my my background on with, with the mountain, and you can actually, the mountain is out today. Um, you can see it. Be sure to, to make time to experience and appreciate the beauty uh, that's all around us here in the Pacific Northwest. And um, it, it, you will never be, you will never regret the time that you spend um, in our national parks and, and state parks. And that beauty will engage your senses and nourish your soul, which is also a crucial goal of Jesuit education. And just kind of talking about these things, our, our commitment to diverse and welcoming community, our student-centered approach to education and our location makes me even more excited for the experiences that lie ahead for you. Um, and in the coming weeks and years, I look forward to, to sharing this journey with you. And so once again, uh, I welcome you to Seattle University and look forward to welcoming you in person on campus in, in the fall. Thank you so much, President Penuel Bear. I know you're heading out now, um, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, class, you'll get to meet him in the fall. Thanks, Nick. Bye. Um, awesome. So we have another leader on campus who is going to join us um, and, well, is with us. And I'll do a quick intro now for you, Alvin. Um, as Vice Provost for Student and Campus Life, Dr. Sturdema serves as the Senior Student Affairs Officer for our campus and community and provides a visionary and administrative leadership for a number of key departments toward fostering student engagement, student belonging, and an integrative and cohesive learning experience. So Alvin, I will now pass us off next to you to welcome our class. 
Thanks, Nick, and good afternoon, good evening, um, everyone. Uh, welcome to all of you, the newest members of our Red Hawk community and family. Uh, it's always a great pleasure for me to have an opportunity to connect with our newest students and their family members and supporters um, and, and others uh, who may be with you um, along for the ride and the journey as you are transitioning um, into Seattle U. For as long as I can remember, this has been one of my favorite times of the year. Um, one, um, as we um, have graduated um, the class of 2023, uh, but more importantly, in particular to you all, um, as we start the orientation season and launch um, you all as our newest students um, who likely bring with you um, a good amount of joy, excitement, enthusiasm, and a commitment to learning um, and evolving that is only matched by your passion for shaping and transforming the world we all live in, um, which um, I know um, is a testament to the experiences that you have had up to this point. I'm um, having had an opportunity to see um, some of your applications to um, the university. Um, I also know that you are entering, as our president noted, um, after having experienced significant disruption and challenges of the last few years, uh, but the start of your Seattle University journey um, is one um, that I hope um, will um, take you well beyond the disruption and the challenges that you've experienced up to this point and into a new realm of, of possibility and excitement. Um, I also know um, that perhaps you also bring with you some caution and nervousness, um, some anxiousness and a range of other emotions like all of you, I'm excited for your entrance into our bustling and vibrant Seattle University campus and look forward to having the opportunity to be in community and fellowship with all of you, gathering over meals, experiencing passing hallway conversations once you're here in person with us on campus, attending events together, among the many other examples that represent the college experience. Many of you have likely dreamed of your entire um, lives and it, perhaps not your entire lives, at least the last several years as you imagine uh, where you would launch into um, your college experiences. Uh, the, the other piece that I think is significant um, for you all to be thinking about um, is, uh, and you know, while that, that's certainly uh, something to look forward to, um, there is much that is required of you um, as um, you start your Seattle U experience um, and that you, um, fully maximize the various experiences and resources that will be presented to you through the course of this summer as a part of your launch and your orientation experience uh, more broadly. Uh, what you do now and how you engage with us through the summer will make all the difference um, in getting you off to the best Red Hawk start possible and ensuring that your acclimation and transition to our community is one that is uh, more easy um, for you um, than perhaps it might be for some others. Seattle U as a university and as an institution is absolutely committed to your growth and development and in investing fully in who you are becoming. And that begins, of course, with your orientation experience. You too will need to invest in your SU experiences and will be asked to give of yourself, sharing your gifts and talents with all of us and to fully commit to the co-creation of a very dynamic and life altering start to your SU experience. This is a time when we'll each be asked to do our part. Wherever you might be in the world, you are all a part of our Red Hawk community and family, and we are committed to ensuring that the persons you are now are changed significantly by your Seattle University education, and that all begins today. Seattle U will deepen your understanding and appreciation of the world we live in and the one that you'll inherit when you graduate from SU. At the university, we are preparing you, our students, to understand and appreciate societies beyond the borders of the US, thus making you more productive in the workforce and better prepared for global citizenship. At a time when we're continuing to grapple with a range of enormous challenges and problems, at Seattle U, you'll find leading authorities in your disciplines in the classroom, sharing with you their daily insights and fostering your growth and development. At SU, we are committed to taking an interdisciplinary approach to our current problems, regardless of whether their origins are within the realm of science or in the realm of human society. We value interdisciplinary inquiry and welcome your contributions as students as we work together 
to answer the really big questions, those whose answers outstrip any one discipline that you might be studying. What better time to be a college student, <clears throat> excuse me, what better time to be a college student than now um, when there's so many social and political issues um, that we grapple with? And you, um, of course, um, as a generation, have the best possibility of solving those problems that the many generations before you have struggled with. And quite honestly, we continue to struggle with. And what better place to do that than in Seattle and at Seattle University, where you will, again, be studying alongside some of the greatest minds of our time. And so again, I, I implore you to take seriously your education um, in this moment in, in time and that you recognize that you have hit a milestone in your graduation um, from high school and your transfer to Seattle University and that you invest fully in what this experience can be and should be for each of you. Uh, Father Peter Hans Kovenbach, who at one point was the leader of the Jesuits worldwide, um, was noted for saying that the real measure of a Jesuit institution is in who our students are becoming. Um, we, of course, are investing in who you are becoming, but you too will need to invest in, in that as well. And we also invite your parent and your family members and other supporters and loved ones to invest in you and to invest in your education. Again, we all must do our part in ensuring that this is one of the best times in your lives um, and certainly in your educational um, journey. Um, we um, also um, would invite that you think about this as a new relationship. And like any promising new relationship, these again are exciting and anxious times for all of us as we extend and deepen the connections between you and the university, as we make meaning of old and new experiences, and as we cultivate awareness and compassion in you and those with whom you encounter. At SU, you'll become informed idealists, people who are impassioned about righting wrongs and making the world a more humane place which is rooted, um, as the president noted, in our mission as an institution. We are also committed to helping you become grounded in the realities of the issues you'll face through your work and studies and how you can affect change. At SU, we will celebrate the power of your individual voice. Those of you who seek to find your own voice, whatever it may be, will be guided through your relationships with faculty, staff, administration, alumni, community members, and your fellow students and peers. Here you will hone your craft and gain the confidence to call yourselves experts in your fields and disciplines of study. We are counting on you to enrich the life of the university, but also to enhance the cultural life of our surrounding community. Certainly this can be challenging, but it requires an investment and a commitment from you, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to engage in ways that are meaningful and authentic and allow you to express some level of vulnerability uh, that really results in the kind of change that we endeavor to create as a university and as individual people with our own unique and authentic voices and ways of going about creating transformation and change in our communities and in the world more broadly. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is also um, really important um, to note that um, as we uh, think about this orientation experience, that you think about it in the, the ways um, that really um, recognize uh, that this is a bookend um, to your experience. And this is the starting bookend. And of course, the, the ending bookend um, will be your commencement exercises and, and ceremonies. Um, and, and we'll very gladly, in the way that we're celebrating this milestone, celebrate that milestone with you as well. But what is most important to to really think about at this particular stage um, is the what you do in between. Um, every moment that you have between now and when you graduate from Seattle University is one that is critically important to the experiences, not only that you're creating for yourself, but that you're creating um, for those others of us who get to go along with you as a part of this journey. And so I invite all of you to think about how you experience this moment and how you really experience every single moment that is a part of this uh, journey um, at SU. It may be difficult to imagine how to take hold of your SU experience, given your more recent experiences, but the tools and the resources available to you for making your start at Seattle University incredible are at your fingertips, but it will be ultimately up to you 
to ensure that you take advantage of every resource and every tool um, that we make available. We are privileged that you've chosen Seattle University and look forward to the great things that lie ahead, both for you and for us, given that the choice that you made is to study um, here. Welcome to Seattle University, and I wish God's blessings upon all of you as you launch and get started. Go Red Hawks. Thanks so much, Alvin. Um, we appreciate you joining us, and you're another figure that folks will uh, have the chance to meet when you get here in the fall, so stay tuned for that. Um, okay, folks, so uh, we've had a few welcomes, and I'm going to share my screen again um, as soon as I find my button. Okay, here we go. And so I have a quick activity for us. For my team, can I get a thumbs up if you're seeing the screen properly? Awesome. Okay, so we have a QR code on here, and this is for you all to scan, and um, this is Red Hawks Across the World is what we're calling this. So once you scan this QR code, it will bring you to a website that is um, called Padlet, which you might be familiar for, for interactive activities. And so once you go here, you'll see a map. And this is a fun activity where basically you'll be able to type in your zip code or area code or location, and it will populate on this map for us, which I think some of you might be doing already. And so I'll share that map in just a second after we get a chance for you all to scan this QR code. Um, and we will also put that link in the chat as well so that you have it. And um, I'm just putting that in there now. And so um, what you'll need to do, I'll give you some instructions. Um, you can click the plus sign, which I think is on the corner of the screen um, to add a post in there. And when the search box pops up, you can enter your zip code or you can enter the name of your town or uh, what country or county that you're coming from. And then there'll be a little pop-up box and then you can click um, publish. And so after you do that, your location should pop up on the map and I'm gonna check, I'm gonna refresh my browser before I share that screen. Um, and it's just taking a second to load before I share it. I see on my end your, your locations are populating. Um, so much so that it is going really slow for my map to upload. And so um, it's going so quickly. I will share this in just a second. But keep putting those populations in there. I'm going to stop sharing the QR code for now. I know I will put that link in here one more time for folks so you have that without the QR code. Share my screen again. Okay, and here is our map. Um, and so let me see if I can move it around a little bit without having it um, slow down very much. It's taken a few times to load because you folks are coming in from all over the place. So. Um, Okay, there we go. So, kind of neither. Can I just get a thumbs up? We're all good here. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So, we are certainly seeing our folks from the Pacific Northwest heavily and a lot of our California friends as well. Um, and I also see we've got a, a fellow Red Hawk up in Alaska. Um, I definitely see our Hawaii community wrapping it proud down here. You know, usually that's about 10% or more of our class. So, we're super excited for that. And we have you sprinkled all across the country, which is really exciting. Uh, we get a lot of West Coast folks, but we see you folks calling in from all over the place. And then I love seeing too, we've got plenty of our international students who are able to join us on here. So you are kind of sprinkled all over the place, which is super cool. I see a few more new ones still popping in. Um, and so folks, if you haven't put it in yet, feel free to still add yourself in there. Awesome. And my map is moving on me. And we're actually going to get a cool screenshot of this after today's event. So we will share that out with you. We'll get it posted on our Instagram. You know, someone put in Antarctica 
We have had someone do that before too. So pretty clever and shout out to Antarctica, um, which is super cool, but just a fun little thing, which I think really highlights, you know, while we have a lot of folks from the West Coast in particular in Hawaii, as well as the rest of the country, I think it's just really cool for us to see, you know, we have, we had almost 600 folks on our call in total. We've got folks coming in from everywhere. And so I hope this is just a fun sneak peek of the diverse and broad community of you that are all going to be coming here in September. And so um, hopefully you had a little fun doing this. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And so Jaden, I would also love a pet penguin. Um, so maybe we can talk about that when you get to campus and make that happen for us. <laughs> um, okay, let me pull up my script real quick. Um, the next person I'm gonna introduce to you is um, one of our most important team members, I say with bias to, sorry to the rest of my team, um, but Ava Getz, she's entering her third year at SU. She is your orientation coach. She's a fellow student leader. Um, this is her second year working with our team and you'll be interacting with her quite frequently over the summer. And so I am going to pass the program off to Ava. Thank you so much, Nick. Hello, y'all. My name is Ava Getz and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the orientation coach for 2023. So as the orientation coach, I have a lot of interaction with new students such as yourselves. And my primary purpose is really to work as a connection for new students to the Seattle University community that you all are now a part of, which is fantastic. This summer, I will be hosting many of the flock talk section sessions and the orientation social sessions that you will be attending. In addition to that, um, I assist in the training of orientation leaders who will be guiding you on your fall welcome experience in a few months. And we will work to together to make sure that you feel right at home at SU. So over the summer, orientation and um, many of our campus partners are hosting over 60 sessions and socials. These cover all sorts of topics such as connecting with our housing and residence teams, learning about academic and support resources, becoming involved about physical and mental health resources, and exploring how to get involved and find community in cam on campus. So a quick breakdown of the sessions um, that you can attend this summer. There are flock talks, which are virtual meetups um, that give you a chance to connect with fellow new Red Hawks while chatting with the orientation team about topics related to your transition to college life at SU. We also have orientation socials and drop-in hours, which are casual socials where you can play games with fellow new Red Hawks and get questions answered by our orientation team. During um, campus partner sessions, you'll meet with leaders across campus to learn about academic and support resources, how to get involved and find a community on campus, and how to get informed about life uh, as a Red Hawk at SU. And then in August and early September, you can meet current Red Hawks to learn about clubs and organizations to join once you arrive on campus. So these socials will be announced in early July and we have over a hundred clubs at SU. And um, some of them have carved out time during the summer to get to know you. These groups will include some club sports teams, cultural and identity based organizations, volunteer groups, religious and spirituality groups, and so many more. So it's been great to connect with you all today and share some of the exciting opportunities that we have for you this summer. And now I want to pass our launch off to Hannah, our graduate, our graduate coordinator. Take it away, Hannah. Perfect. Hello, everyone. As Ava mentioned, my name is Hannah Parrott. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm actually in my second year of graduate school here at SU. So I'm in the Clinical Mental Health Counseling Master's program, just finished up my first year. So in the orientation office, I work to recruit, hire, and train orientation leaders, help plan fall welcome, and help facilitate and run the Ignite Mentorship Program, which is a mentorship program for our first year students here at SU. So super exciting, and I'm sure y'all will hear about that a little bit later throughout the summer or into your first year. And I kind of want to just take a few minutes to remind you about our online orientation models and online uh, and orientation guide app as well. Um, so these modules and others available on Canvas are intended to help you onboard you to the Red Hawk community. 
They are full of information about being an SU student, such as learning about SU's Jesuit character, walking through advising and registration information, and other topics including managing finances, maintaining wellness, and exploring identity and inclusion, and much more. So online orientation modules are also required. You will need to complete a survey at the end of each module to have marked it as complete so we know that you have completed that. And once you submit the survey, we will know we will uh, know you have reviewed and completed the module as well. As a reminder, the deadline to complete your first set of modules that you received on May 15th, including your Academic Advising 101 and Course Registration 101 models, is this Friday, June 16th, so just coming up in a couple of days. Uh, completing all of these modules should only take you about two to three hours in total, so it's super doable for the next couple of days. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about the Seattle U University Orientation Guide app, which Nick is showing the QR code for on the screen. Um, the orientation app, if you haven't downloaded it already, is the easiest way to keep track of all orientation sessions. This will be for summer orientation and then fall welcome and orientation in the fall as well. So by using the app, you have summer orientation schedule and all the campus resources readily available on your phone or computer whenever you need them. So to access the orientation app, just go to your app store for your phone or iPad or tablet and search for Seattle University Orientation, or you can scan the QR code on the screen as well. So on the app, you'll be able to view all the sessions in the summer orientation schedule. Each session has a link that you can click to RSVP to attend that session. You can also visit the orientation website to find summer orientation schedule and click the RSVP links to sign up. So there's a couple of resources for that one. And then as a reminder, summer orientation is entirely virtual for this summer. Um, so just to keep that in mind that there are a lot of remote sessions. So besides uh, your advising and registration workshops, the rest of your summer sessions are kind of choose your own adventure style. This means you can participate in as many sessions as you're available for and those, and those that feel most relevant to the type of information and support you need to prepare you for arriving on campus in September. And as always, if you ever have any questions about the summer orientation schedule, you can always shoot us an email. It's just orientation at seattleu.edu. And then, yeah, it was great to meet you all, even so briefly. Uh, I'm going to pass the program back to Nick for some reminders and wrap us up. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Hannah. Um, so I actually see that many of you are talking about different things related to academics and modules. And so I have a slide here with a little chart. And so this is part of the email that folks receive from your um, uh, advising team from your school or college that we sent on May 15th. And so here is information about academic advising and course registration. And so the reason why we're sharing this is, as you can see, there's a lot of this that is required or highly recommended. There's some deadlines in here that are coming up and that will take place over the coming weeks through July. Um, and we also share this because academic advising and course registration is just some of the most um, prominent and um, important pieces of your summer orientation, particularly in the first half of summer orientation through July. And so a couple things on here, I love seeing how many of you in the chat are following this too and already chatting with each other and supporting each other with these deadlines and things coming up, which is great. So yeah, the Academic Advising 101 and Course Registration 101 modules, those are due this Friday. And so you can find those in Canvas. When you log into Canvas, make sure that you um, click the option that says Courses. That's where you're gonna find these. And when you go to Courses, you'll see a course or a group that's called New Student Orientation. And once you open that, you can click on modules and you'll find all of them in there. So like Hannah said, these will take about one to two. If you take a little bit more time, maybe three hours to go through these. We really, really push these because uh, we know that if you follow the information in here, the way we set these up is to really walk you through step by step every piece that you need to know to get ready for registering for your first classes for fall quarter. We also highlight this because we know that getting your fall quarter schedule is kind of a milestone in your transition to college. And it's also just a really exciting thing that, you know, by mid-July, you're going to have your schedule of classes for September already, which is super exciting. 
The other thing that's noted on here for this Friday is the Alex Math Placement Assessment. And so that you can find when you log into your admissions portal and go to your new student checklist. That is a checklist item listed on there. Once you click on there, it will be listed. It will open a new page for you that gives you the instructions. There's a password in those instructions. It's a secret password, so I won't share it out loud, but it's listed in your um, Alex page on your checklist. And once you go through there, um, most students we find take 60 to 90 minutes to finish their math placement assessment. You have a total of two and a half hours to complete it. You can also do multiple attempts after your first time taking it. You will have to go through some prep modules to, before you're allowed to take it another time. But um, I do want to give a reminder, this is not an exam. It's not a pass-fail test. The score that you get, well, it's kind of like Goldilocks, if you know the story where you don't want to be in a math course that's too hard. You don't want to be in a math course that's too easy. You want to get into a math course that's just right for you. And the reason we use this is to make sure that even right now in your very first quarter or your first year, we're, help, we're helping to get you on the track to graduation. So we don't want your course schedule to get messed up along the way. Also, academic advising workshops are coming up in two weeks. And so are the course registration workshops in July. And so attending your academic advising workshop and your course registration workshop are required for you to do over the summer. And so if you do have a conflict with the course registration workshops in particular, we ask that you email us or that you email your academic advising team and we can help you work through that. But make sure that you sign up for those. I can promise you we will send you text message and email reminders. Um, to sign up for those. And so get ahead of that um, so you don't get too many reminder emails or messages from us, but we will make sure that we help track that along the way with you because we know that there's a lot of steps in orientation in general, but specifically with academic advising and course registration. So lots of reminder information there. Um, and so um, with that, um, I'm gonna stop share for just a second. And so um, something else that I want to check in about too is just kind of a teaser for our fall welcome program. And so there's, um, I know our summer is entirely virtual. Once we get through all of that and you get here in person, everything starts in person Saturday, September 16th. And that is our new student move-in day. So it's a mix of move-in for those of you who are going to be living on campus. And then also those of you who are local and might be commuting to campus, we have all sorts of events and meetups for commuter students as well. This is for first year students. This is for transfer students. This is for all of you coming to campus. So after the move-in period ends by the early afternoon, we'll get things started with our fall welcome kickoff. This is a huge event. Our um, massive North Court gym space on campus will be filled with you. This is also for families. So your families are welcome to this. Um, and we will have that in the, in the mid afternoon on that date. And then after that is when you'll go out to your orientation groups. All of you will have an orientation leader assigned to you. And there is, um, you'll meet your RA, your resident assistant and have a community meeting with your floor. And so right away on your first day on campus, um, whether you're living on campus and meet your well and your RA or you're living on campus and you meet your orientation leader, and some of our commuter student leaders who are on campus with our um, commuter program on campus. That's an opportunity where we're connecting you with peer leaders right away. We're gonna get you in groups where you're meeting each other right away. And it's an opportunity where it might not be folks you would normally meet in classes or living in your residence hall or in the same commuter um, lounge that you might be in, but it's a really great opportunity where we get you connected right away. After that, we have meals planned for you. We have all sorts of events where um, if you go to our website, you'll probably see along the way or to our Instagram, you'll see the huge class photo that we did um, last year. And so we'll get out in the field and we'll get in the shape of the SU logo. And that's an opportunity to do one of our traditions. We have Red Hawk Ring In where you'll get in a group to ring the chapel bell the day before classes start. And we have all sorts of um, events. We will do excursions out into the city, um, all sorts of uh, traditions for you on campus, including our convocation and our academic induction, which are opportunities to um, be engaging and it's an induction into our academic community on campus. So much, much more to come in late July and early August is when we'll start getting you more information about what the fall schedule will look like. But Saturday, September 16th is when everything kicks off for that. 
Um, and for families and supporters, I'll, I'll note specifically, I know a lot of you might be looking at travel plans for when you might head out from Seattle after your student moves out of campus. I would say Saturday evening, anytime after Saturday evening, like after like 6 p.m. perhaps, is a safe time for you to start looking at when your departing flights or, or transportation might be from Seattle and from campus. And so if you do have questions about that, please email us at orientation at seattleu.edu and we can talk through those travel plans with you to figure out what's gonna be best for you and your family. So don't hesitate to reach out for that. Um, something that I'm announcing for the first time right now as well is we're gonna have some programs called early bird immersions. We love our Red Hawk puns here. And so we try to find the right amount of cheese when we're announcing those. Our early bird immersions are some uh, early arrival programs that will happen a few days before that big move-in day I just shared, before September 16th. And so these will be different experiences to do some outdoor adventure experience nearby, um, to do some engaging on campus with um, some of you might have academic programs available for you. And also a few other programs related to service. And uh, we have a longstanding program for our BIPOC and first generation students as well that leads to mentorship throughout the year. And so this is the teaser I'm dropping for you. We've got more information coming soon. We'll send an email out to all of you and your families so you can look at those. And so those will be coming hopefully by the first week in July and we will update that on our website as well. So um, we've got just a little bit of time left and I know I saw some chat a bit ago about Discord. And so many of you I know are in the Discord from our admissions team related to kind of um, doing your applications and onboarding and checklist information and stuff. And so I am now going to share, let me find the right button. Okay, um, this is the QR code for our Discord community form. So we ask you to scan this and then fill out the form here. And there's some community guidelines we just want you to read to, read through and agree to before you join. And so we'll also ask you to put um, your four digit code for your Discord handle in there. And um, after you do that, after you fill the form out, it will give you the link to join our Discord. Um, and so um, I'll leave this on the screen for a few minutes. And uh, we're excited for you to join that. It's an opportunity to kind of like you all are doing in the chat, which I love today, a chance for you to connect in there and be able to chat with each other. There is also different channels that we have inside there. So we have one for um, students of color, LGBTQ students, um, transfer students. You have your own channel in there to be able to connect with each other. We have some for residential students and commuter students. And then we have places where you can specifically ask questions. So. Our staff is not in there 24 seven to be able to answer all your questions, but if it comes in overnight, we'll answer it first thing next morning when we get back in the office. But just another chance for you all to connect with each other, chat about all sorts of things. Um, I know for some of you who are in local areas, uh, whether that's in our area or some of you who are in California together or Hawaii or wherever you are, it might be a chance for you to connect and maybe meet in person over the summer before you get here. So. Definitely when you jump in there, throw in what your location is so that you can connect with folks. I will continue to leave this on the screen um, and I still see that we have some Q&A going in the chat. And so um, let me see what is going on here. I know our team is working on the Q&A. Um, okay. I see someone is sharing the Discord link. Just make sure you fill out our form before you do that. Um, I am seeing that Discord has updated their username system. And so for where it asks for the four digit code, if you just wanna on our form, put your um, Discord tag, those numbers in there. Um, technology is ever evolving and today is a perfect case example of that. So um, where it is asking for that, just put in your Discord handle instead of those four digits and you can um, then fill out the form and get access to the Discord. Um, just make sure, I notice people having trouble. I see Derek and some other folks are sharing that in there. Thanks for helping us out with that. Um, if you can just make sure you fill out the form before you go on Discord. Uh, we're also gonna set up a follow up email after this event. And so we will put a link to the form and to the Discord in there so that you can access that as well. So, um, 
I think we have gotten to most of our Q&A to get our questions answered. And so we have just a couple of minutes where um, if folks are asking questions, we can answer them. I see a really important question in here. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I see a really important question here about where to find the new student checklist, which is a great question. So when you log into your admissions portal, um, when you log in, you'll see a few different tabs. There's one at the top that says admissions portal. There's one that's about financial aid. And then the next one is a page that says orientation, Red Hawk Next Steps. When you go to that page, that's where you will find all of your new student checklist items. That's where you can find, um, I just got a notice, we already have 75 folks in our Discord. Keep piling in there, folks, um, to join. We have just a few minutes left, Jalissa. Um, your new student checklist is in the orientation portal page inside your admissions portal. Your checklist is there with specific information about advising and registration workshops in there, which are required. And there's also, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see where all of our block talks and our socials are listed out. And all the way at the bottom, we also have a link for the event. I recommend going to our website or using the orientation app to keep track of the events. The way we're able to organize the information in there is a little bit easier for you. Lots of folks are looking at roommates. There is a roommate session coming up soon. So look for that in your schedule and make sure you RSVP for that. Um, but yes, I also saw another question about math placement and I wanna highlight that again, your Alex math placement, that is gonna be located in your new student checklist. So you'll see one that says Alex math placement assessment. When you click on it, you'll open to a new page which has instructions, including the password and the link to log into Alex so that you can complete that. That's my name to see your emails with your SU emails. So good question. So we use Microsoft Outlook for SU email accounts, and that's where your seattleu.edu email account can be logged in. And so another reminder I just want to plug real quick, um, over the summer, when you log into your admissions portal, you're going to use whatever email you set up to first fill out your application for Seattle University which for a lot of folks is like a Gmail or a personal email. Um, if it's a high school email that's no longer active, make sure you contact your admissions counselor. They can help change that for you. But you're always gonna use your personal email to log in there. Whenever you're checking your SU email or you're going to Canvas or My Seattle U, um, when you're um, doing single sign-on to do the Alex Math placement, you're gonna use your Seattle University email account. And so, just important, an important distinction to make. But with that, I'm gonna close this up now. This was awesome. I love how vibrant and engaging you all have been in the chat. Folks, it looks like you're already making connections across majors and looking for roommates together and jumping in that Discord. And so thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's a busy time of wrapping up high school for a lot of folks. We really appreciate you joining us. We will get a link out to you probably next week once we get captions on this video to send out. Um, and we will also um, post more information of recordings and things on our website all summer. Thanks for joining us and Fox up everyone. We'll be here all summer to support you. Um, don't forget to email us for questions, orientation at seattleu.edu. We respond pretty quickly, usually in 24 hours or less. If it's something that feels more complicated, you can call us at 20, <coughs> excuse me, 206 296 2525. And we can chat through anything that you need help with. So thanks, folks. You're free to log off now. We will stay on for a few minutes in case more questions pop up. But um, thank you so much for joining us.